and Laura Vitali. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to make cinnamon rolls. Now, this has been one of the most requested recipes in Laura in the Kitchen history. Laura in the Kitchen has been running around for about two years now, and since day one, everyone's been so curious to know how to make cinnamon rolls. So I am super excited to share this recipe with you, and just like any other of my recipes, it's simple and it's absolutely delicious. A little time consuming, but you don't really have to do a whole lot of work to make them, which is always a plus in my book. But to get started, let's go over the ingredients. You're gonna need some all-purpose flour, some milk, some warm water, granulated sugar, unsalted butter that's been melted, salt, one egg, a little bit of vanilla extract, and some dry active yeast. Now, this is what you're gonna need to make the dough part. And then I'll show you the filling, and then I'll show you the topping. But one, one thing at a time. Now, I'm gonna make this in my standing mixer with a dough hook, but if you don't have one, you can make this in a bowl with a wooden spoon. It would work just as well. Now, first thing we're gonna do is activate the yeast. Now, we're gonna take some water, which is about 115 degrees. You want it to be not too hot, but it has to definitely be warm. And to that, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of sugar. And the reason why I'm doing that is because the yeast needs to feed off something, and that's what it does with the sugar. Cut my little bag of yeast, and this is a little baggie, which is a quarter of an ounce, or also seven grams. If you have the top of it, you can just use seven grams. It's about two, two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast if you have the jar. Um, but these are just very simple and easy. Just crack one open and pour it in. Now all I'm gonna do, if I can get it open, is sprinkle the yeast all over the top, just like so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just leave it aside for literally about three to four minutes until it starts to activate. And in the meanwhile, we are going to start making the dough. Now, in this big bowl, I'm going to put in my milk, which is whole milk. And I do stress that you use whole milk for this. I mean, I always like to have um, skim on hand because that's what I drink in my coffee. But for this, it has to be whole milk. It makes a huge difference. I'm gonna add the milk, the melted butter. Make sure it's unsalted, please. I'm going to add in one egg, which I'm going to crack in a separate bowl. Just like so, just in case there's a bad egg, you don't ruin your whole mixture. Great, and I like to put just a teeny, teeny, tiny tad bit of vanilla extract in my dough. I think it's fabulous, but you can leave it out if you want to. I think it's fantastic, so I'm gonna put it in. And I'm also going to put in my sugar. Now, not a whole lot of sugar, because we are gonna make a sweet filling, but for now, all I'm gonna do is just mix, toge mix this together for just about a minute or two. That looks good. My yeast is ready to go in. As you can see, it started to foam up, and that's when you know your yeast is activated. So I'm just going to scoop it all and pour it right in there. Now I'm gonna turn this down. I'm actually gonna turn it off for just a second. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, mix, just very quickly, my salt with my flour. Give this a gentle mix. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to add half of my flour in. Now, turn it on, on low, otherwise it's gonna get covered in flour. And just mix it until the flour is incorporated and then we'll add in our second half. That's just about all mixed through. Now all I wanna do is take a spatula and just run it on the sides so that that flour gets incorporated as well. I'm going to add in my remaining flour. Here we go. And I'm going to turn this again down on low at first until it's pretty much all incorporated. I'm gonna crank the heat up to medium and I'll show you what it looks like. As you can see, my flour is mixed all the way through, so what I'm gonna do now is crank up the speed, and I'm gonna let that mix for a good five minutes or so, or until you, the dough is nice and smooth, and in the meantime, take a bowl and just oil it with some um, vegetable oil, or canola oil, any flavorless oil, and have that ready on hand. My dough's been mixing for about five minutes and it is perfect. It's as smooth as a baby's bum bum. Look at that. That is what I'm looking for. I'm really happy with that. Now, just very quickly, pull it together with your hands. If you can avoid, if it's too, too sticky, then put a little bit of flour down. But this for me is just fine. It's a tiny bit tacky, but that's fine. It's gonna give me a really light, fluffy cinnamon roll. Yum. Now I'm gonna put this in my oiled bowl. Make sure to oil the bottom. What I'm gonna do is just flip it because there's a lot of oil that collects at the bottom. There we go. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna cover this with some plastic wrap 
and I'm going to put this somewhere warm. Um, it should be relatively around 70, 72 degrees in your house, so the warmest place is where you need to put this. And it's gonna let, I'm going to let it rise for about an hour and a half to two hours, or until it's like really doubled in volume. And then, I'll show you the next step. My dough is sitting in a warm spot for a couple of hours, and as you can see, it's really doubled in volume now. So what I'm going to do is just dump this on a well-floured surface. I'm not even going to bother touching it. Look at that. Perfect. It's all bubbly and airy. means it's going to be really light. Now let me take you over the ingredients for the filling really quickly. You're going to need some brown sugar, some regular granulated sugar, some softened unsalted butter, and of course you're going to need cinnamon. So those are your ingredients for the topping. Now what I'm going to do is just flour the top, just a teeny tiny tad. And you also want to have a 9 by 13 inch pan that's well buttered, ready to go. So, this is how it's going to go. All I'm going to do now is using my hands and my rolling pin, I'm going to just roll this out until it's about, I would say, 15 inches or so. And it's very soft, so don't worry. I can pretty much use my hands, as you can see. And your 9 by 13 pan can be a guide. So that looks about pretty perfect for me. It's about 15 inches. That looks good. And just, I just do it my, with my hands, but like I said, you can use a rolling pin. That's good. Like I said, it's, you want it to be about 15 by 9. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my soft butter, and it has to be soft, soft and unsalted, otherwise it won't spread very well, and just smear this evenly over your dough. That looks great. Okay, so now really quickly, you're going to mix both of your sugars and the cinnamon together. Just makes it easier to do it ahead of time. Just mix them all up. That looks good. Not going to be too worried. And now you want to just sprinkle this mixture evenly over the top of the butter. Just about there. Ah, that's good. Okay, so now you want to start on the long side, okay, and you just want to start rolling this, okay. You want to make sure you do it kind of tightly. We're right at the end, so what I'm going to do is just to take a little bit of water and just wet the edges, just to seal it, that's all. It's no, for no other purposes other than just to seal the dough together. And that is pretty much all you need to do. Just tuck and roll, tuck and roll. Easy, and this dough is just so incredibly easy to work with and it's very forgiving. So. Your log is ready. I like to cut the ends off because I love my cinnamons, my cinnamon rolls to be perfect. All of them need to be the same, in my opinion. So the ends a little bit skimpy with the filling, so I like to do it this way. Now you should be able to get about 16 cinnamon rolls out of this. So the easiest way for me to make sure they're even is to look at your dough, okay? Then cut it in half, okay? Then cut it in half again, okay? That's good. And then just keep cutting in half until you have 16 equal pieces. Last one. Look at that. Great. So, all I'm going to do now is put these cut side down onto my well buttered 9 by 13 baking dish. Last four. Here we go. Okay, these look amazing. Now, these have to be covered. I'm just trying to space them out a little tiny bit. Now, these are going to get covered again, and I'm going to put them again somewhere warm and let them rise again for about 45 minutes to an hour or until they've pretty much doubled. You want them to be nice and fluffy, and then I'll show you the next step. My cinnamon rolls look perfect. I had them in a warm place for about an hour, and as you can see, they've definitely doubled, or at least they're bigger than they were when we first started. Now, at this point, you want to get your oven preheated to 350 because we are finally ready to bake these. And just let me tell you something. The smell in your house when you're making cinnamon rolls, it is insane. It is like the best candle shop of life, but you get to eat it. It's amazing. So. Warning, it's going to smell great in your house. So all I'm going to do is take some melted butter and I'm just going to brush on top of the cinnamon rolls. They're going to help brown and of course give lots and lots of flavor and you know whoever said cinnamon rolls 
or for someone that was on a diet was definitely mistaking, but they are definitely a wonderful, wonderful treat. They look perfect. Now these are going to go into a preheated oven at 350, like I said, for about 30 minutes until they're puffed, golden, brown, and in the meantime, we're going to make the glaze. Of course we're going to have to make a glaze with this. How can you have a cinnamon roll without a glaze? So let's get them done. Now while the cinnamon rolls are finishing up in the oven, we're going to make the glaze. And to make the glaze, you're just going to need a few ingredients. You're going to need some confectioner sugar, also known as icing sugar or powdered sugar. You're going to need some cream cheese and a little bit of butter, and you have to make sure that they are at room temperature. Some vanilla extract and a little bit of milk that I've warmed up in the microwave. It needs to be warm, gives you a better runny consistency, because we're making a glaze, not a frosting. And I'm going to make mine in my mixer, but you can make this by hand with just a bowl and a whisk. And I'm pretty much going to add all my ingredients, all my ingredients except the milk because you kind of just don't know how much milk you're going to need. You could need, you know, three tablespoons. Sometimes you need a little bit more. You're just looking for a runny consistency. So, closing this up, I'm going to put this on low until the powdered sugar is pretty much all incorporated. And then I'm going to start adding the milk in little by little. My powdered sugar is incorporated and I just cranked up the speed to medium, medium high. And I'm gonna start adding the milk one tablespoon at a time. And again, I'm looking for a runny consistency. That looks good. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly what you're looking for. There we go. It's nice and runny, then I just take my spatula like always and stir everything from the bottom to make sure everything got well mixed. Now I'm just going to set this aside for a few minutes until my cinnamon rolls have finished baking, which they just need a couple more minutes, and then, and only then, we can put them together and finally eat them. Look at that. Look at those babies. It's been two years requested in Laura in the kitchen to make cinnamon rolls, and you got them. But now, enough of the talking, time to drizzle on this glaze and finally get to eat them. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, is just drizzle this on. Oh, look at that. Eh, there is just no more beautiful sight. Is there? That is just unbelievable. Drizzle that evenly over the top. Smear it on all nice and evenly. Don't leave anything behind. And it has to be done while they're nice and out of the oven. Now, I don't know about you, but if you're anything like me, which that means you're a little bit naughty, then you know that the cinnamon roll to get is the ones right from the center. I don't like crusty bits, I like fluff, and I like the center cinnamon roll. And my husband goes crazy because if I have a tray of cinnamon rolls done, there's one missing, and where is it missing? Right in the center. So you can't even hide the evidence that you have stolen one before your guests arrive. But who cares? I certainly don't. So, I'm just going to, they cut like butter, first of all. They are so incredibly soft. I'm going to, for that one right there. Oh yeah, look. Look at this, look at this, look at the fluff. Look at the perfection. Look at that. It's almost as big as my head, but if anybody can handle it, that'd be me. All right, I gotta get in. I can't, I can't take another second of them. They're talking to me. They're like, come on, Laura. You have had it because wait, you've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Oh, cut it right in half. Look at that. Oh, I can't take it. Holy moly. That is a home run. I can't tell you how good this is. Huh. It's official. I did it, and they're perfect. And I hope that you enjoyed this recipe as much as I do. And look at them, they're foolproof. They come out perfect every single time. And to get the recipe full of the ingredients that so you can just print it out, put it on your table, and get, do get cooking, go to laurainthekitchen.com. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.